Hey everyone, how are you guys all doing? I hope everyone's doing good as usual. Um, today I'm jumping on, I'm going to be doing the Philippine Eagle page from Fragile World by Kirby Rosanis. Um, I'm just jumping on because I don't really like how do I say like I don't post a lot of coloring chats or or coloring tutorials or things like that but um I posted my finished page in one of the groups that I'm in and a lot of people asked you know what colors I was using and tutorials and things like that so I figured um I'll just record the next page that I do and I chose the eagle. I spent about um, maybe a good 30 minutes or so trying to figure out what page I wanted to do next. And for some reason, I kept coming back to this one. So this is the one I'm going to do. And I'm actually, today, I'm going to do these trees here. And I'm going to break the video up into parts. Um, it might be a lot of parts i mean i'm looking at the picture and it doesn't seem like a lot of different you know things but i want to break it up into parts because there are people who want to know the colors i'm using how i do it and i'm a pretty slow colorist but i'm breaking it up into parts because i want to try to not have the video go on for hours and hours because not everybody has the time to sit and watch, you know, an hour long, two hour long video. So I'm just going to do like, I'm going to do it in part. So today we're going to work on these trees here, all of these trees. And, you know, in a different video, we may do the branch. And then we may do like his head and the body and then the wings in another video like that. That way it's a lot easier and people can kind of go and be like, okay, I like the color combo of the trees. Let me go watch the video for just the trees. You can do that and you won't have to worry about, oh, well, she's doing the head and then this and then that in one video and I just want the trees. So I'm going to do just the trees today and... um you know, the next video, it'll be something else. And we'll see how it goes. Um, if you guys prefer the longer videos, let me know. And then I can do multiple elements, maybe. Like, maybe I can do, you know, the the whole bird in one video. Or, you know, the background and the trees and another. You know, like that. Just let me know if you guys prefer it in, in blocks. So you can kind of pick and choose what you want to see. Or if you prefer the longer videos. So let's get into it. Um, I'm using my polychromos today. I have my color chart here. Um, I'm going to try to remember to kind of give an alternate color for the Prisma colors because I know there's people out there who prefer Prisma colors. Now, well, the first color I'm using, this will be my lightest color. Um, it's going to be Naples Yellow and the Polychromos. Now, for Prismacolor, um, the closest thing to it, to me, would probably be maybe a Canary Yellow. Um, it, it seems to be a little bit more more yellow here is the canary yellow for the prisma color and then here is the naples yellow can you guys see that so the naples yellow is a little tiny bit more muted but that's about as close as you're gonna get um you can just use a lighter pressure and it won't be you know so so yellow so and that's one way to do it. So I'm going to zoom you guys in here. Okay. So the way I do this is I put down my lightest color. 
and I put it all over. And I'm, I use very, very light pressure because I want to make sure I have all my colors in the right place. And, you know, with, the, with my lightest color, I still use light pressure because sometimes when I'm, you know, going over and I'll show you when I'm using the other colors, Sometimes I'll darken my lightest color in certain areas a little bit, and sometimes I'll just leave it. Oh, there's a tree here. Sometimes I'll just, you know, leave it as it is. So that way I have different color variations. So I'm just using a really, really light pressure. And you can barely see it on camera and you can also barely see it in real life so what you're seeing right now is about right to what i'm seeing um but that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna build it up and this the i have the uk version of this book and um the paper is a bit thinner than kirby's other books now, it might just be because it's the UK version, but it's definitely going to take me some getting used to because I'm not used to, oh, excuse me, my phone's going off. Sorry about that. Um, I'm not used to, you know, having the thinner paper as far as Kirby's books, so... I'm sorry, hang on one minute, guys. Sorry, give me one moment. Okay, sorry about that. So, whew, sorry. Um, I'm not used to the thinner paper, so I had to like really be careful when I was doing the turtle because I was like, wait a minute, this paper is a little bit thinner. And I noticed that it was having, my polychromos were having a hard time layering. And I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, but uh, that's just what I'm used to. I'm used to it, you know, layering and layering. Um, but it's not necessarily a bad thing because also I noticed that the the colors, they, they seem to blend and mix a little bit more beautifully to me, it seems anyway, in the UK version. So I don't, I don't think the fact that the paper is thinner is a bad thing. It's just going to take some practice and, you know, some getting used to. So I did the turtle page and I was like, okay, you know, I did a little bit of practice and I got a little bit taste of, you know, what the paper was like and what I could and couldn't do. And I also used my Prismacolors a little bit on that same page. I kind of use that page as a testing page, but at the same time, I, I tread it very carefully because I just wasn't sure what exactly the paper was going to do, how the pencil was going to react. I just, I wasn't quite sure. So I tread it very lightly and the Prisma colors, when I was using them, um, in my opinion, they seem to go down a lot more smoothly and they mix well with the polychromos. Um, uh, someone in the group was asking one of the groups, I'm in a couple coloring groups, so one of the, the Kirby Rosanna's groups, she was asking me how I was able to 
mix my polychromos with I'm gonna bring you guys up a little with my Prisma color and how you know how did that work and you know I told her I mix them all the time you know I, I don't really have a problem with them mixing together but they did mix together really well on this paper and that let me know okay I can use them I can mix them I can use them together as long like I said as I'm careful because if I put down too many layers it'll be really hard to you know keep adding to them so that was my lightest color that was my Naples yellow now I'm gonna come in with some terracotta can you uh, let's see Maybe if I pull it back just a bit. Okay, that's terracotta. And the closest thing in Prismacolor to terracotta probably would be I want to say goldenrod is actually pretty close. Um, so here's what goldenrod looks like. That's in Prismacolor. And here's terracotta. So I would say those those two are pretty close together. Let me zoom you out so you can see. Those two are pretty close. Yeah. So if you don't have polychromos and you want to use Prismacolor, that's the color to go with. All right. So this will be, and I, and I want to think that the light is kind of coming down this way. So I'm going to be following Kirby's lines, but I'm also going to be adding in my own little mix. Now, Kirby's lines are there for the shadows and, you know, it's your book, so you can color it your way. You don't have to follow his lines. Um, most of the time I do follow them, but other times I don't because sometimes the lines aren't there where I feel like they should be. So what I do is I just kind of envision it myself. So I don't want to add too much of this terracotta because I want it to have kind of a, I want some of that yellow to still be there. And so I'm, right now I'm going to just add some of this on the where he has the lines. And then I'm going to see how it looks. And if I need to add some more in different places, then I will. And if not, then we'll carry on and we'll continue layering. Now, you, again, you want to make sure the whole way through that you're using you know, that light pressure, because again, this paper is not, if you have the UK version, which most people do because the US version is not out till March. So as of this video, we all have the same book with the same paper. And, you know, if you're in the UK, obviously you're probably used to, you know, this paper, but, um, for those who don't normally get their books, uh, you know, from the UK release or, you know, the UK version of the books and they normally wait or anything like that, you know, you're not really, you might not be used to this paper. So again, don't go in with a heavy hand unless you know that's where you want that color and you are for sure you want it to be that dark otherwise you're stuck with it i mean you can try to erase it but i haven't tried that out yet so i don't know you know i just i don't want anyone to rip their book or you know so go in lightly um tread lightly be careful you know and if you aren't following along and you're just you know using your own colors your own combos i still would recommend tread carefully you know i don't mean it just because you know oh 
you're following along you have to do it that way you don't it's your book some people are using you know different mediums um and if you're worried about you know bleed through and things like that i would use the pages in the back where it talks about the animals there's like little things back there that you can actually color um i would test you know use that as a test because you know those are just small little things in the back um, a lot of people don't really even color those anyway so you know use it as a test page use you know there's little tiny elements back there um you can use the publisher page in the front with the fish. You know, if you if you don't normally color that, you can use that as a test page for your mediums. Um, that's a good idea as well. But again, everybody has their own way of coloring. I'm just giving you my opinion because I noticed that the paper was definitely different than the US version books. And I didn't know that it was that much of a difference when I ordered it. I mean, I still would have ordered it regardless, you know. But I did realize very quickly I needed to be careful and kind of practice a little bit. Because I do want a second copy. So when the U.S. version comes out, I will be getting a copy of that. And I'm going to use that one. You know, this one I kind of just want to use only pencils in this version since the paper is kind of thin and I don't really want to test my luck with anything else. So, you know, pencils in this one, um, maybe some, some slight, you know, metallic gel pen or something like that, maybe. But I want this one to also be the one that I use to, I use reference photos and things like that to kind of get it realistically as possible. Um, uh, let's see here. So it seems just from following the lines that this seems like enough orange. And I wanted it to be kind of like autumn. I'm not sure. I know I want it to be kind of like a, not really a sunset, but I do want it to be kind of like an evening page. Um, I mean, obviously it would be like a sunset or the sun is midway down or even midday, but I want it to feel like a nice autumn day with this eagle just hanging out up here in this tree. So I think I got all of the, I think I got all of them. And I I take my time. I'm practicing, you know, taking my time. And I feel like these videos will help me also take my time, slow down. You know, I'm a slow colorist already anyway. But I also want to not be slower, but... Sometimes when I'm like nearing the end of a picture or, you know, something like that, I'll try to like hurry and finish it so I can see what it looks like. And sometimes it, you know, it changes up a bit on me. So I just want to take my time and, you know, bring you guys along with me while I do it. So my next color, which would be my, my shadow color, it's going to be... This is going to be Burnt Umber. And this is in the poly. So let me see what I can find for a Prismacolor match. Um, let's see here. Maybe. I'm thinking the Light Umber is a pretty good match. Because um, Prismacolor has a... They have a light umber, and they have a dark umber, but the dark umber is really dark. So light umber would probably be the best match to this burnt umber. 
because here's the burnt umber for polychromos and then here is the light umber for prismacolor so just you know if you're really trying to match what i'm doing just um if you don't want to use the match colors that i'm giving you then you can just kind of look at what I'm coloring and then go from there because you know you might want your tree to have more brown or darker brown or you know things like that so the browns you know it may it may differ it may vary like I said everybody colors different um so I, I kind of want to know like who all has the book and if you have it, what pages are you working on? Because it took me so long to figure out what page I wanted to do. And I just, they're all so beautiful and I want them to be as realistic as possible. And, you know, I'm not the best colorist. Trust me, I am not. And so when I see them, I like, if I don't have kind of like what I want to do already in my head or at least mostly then I flip a page and I'm like okay I'm not ready for that one yet because I have a specific thing in my head and if I can't pull all the colors together you know then I won't do it I'll I'll wait and uh so for this one I knew you know the bird the color for the bird, you know, you can just Google that for a reference. But the rest of the picture, I was just like, okay, you know, I had to figure out what color I wanted the trees. And I even went as far as, you know, looking at different um, trees that were in the Philippines and, you know, things like that. And I was like, okay, what season is it? You know, do I want to make it look like it's cold or warm? And I just had so many, my mind just had so many thoughts. And I still kept coming back to this page after flipping through the book about a hundred times. So I was like, okay, this page is calling to me. So this is the one I'm going to do. So I'm curious on which, you know, what pages you guys picked. And how did you go about picking them? Because I might need a better system on um, picking these pages. I might need to just close my eyes and, you know, pick a page. Because if I keep putting them off and if I keep, you know, oh, I'm not going to do this one right now. I'm going to come back or I'm not ready or this one's kind of intimidating. I'm never going to get through this book. And... I kind of want to do, because I have world, I just got world within worlds too. And I have two pages completed out of that one. And um, I kind of want to bounce back and forth between them because I, I want to color in them both. And both, you know, Kirby, he is, when it comes to the coloring books, those, those are my favorite. So I'm going to put this little dark area here in this brown. This tree is like, there's an opening here that needs to be dark. And so, you know, I think these might actually be, because Mythomorphia was my favorite. But honestly, these, these two here are definitely taking the cake. So, and then, you know, my Mythomorphia book is falling apart. So, I don't. You know, no hard feelings towards it or anything. I still love the art, but the fact that it keeps falling apart every time I touch it is breaking my heart. So I kind of put that one to the side until I get another copy. And I don't know what copy it is, but I want the one where, you know, it's it's got the red writing on it and the colorful. I don't know which country or region that that one is from but i want that one because i haven't heard anyone with that copy you know 
speak about it falling apart. So I'm just putting these patches of brown and then I'm going to come back in with my terracotta. So this is basically how I just, you know, I sit for a minute and I really think about the colors I'm going to use and I try to envision it in my head before I put it on paper. And I even have, you know, I have my swatch chart where, you know, I have like all the different, um, you know, materials that I use and, you know, it's here and it has like, you know, let me zoom you out for a second. It has all of my, you know, all of my stuff in there. But I also have like this little sketchbook I got from like a, it's like a Japanese market store that was by my house when I lived in California. And I use it to test like combinations and I just, I just scribble and scribble and scribble and scribble and write down combos and then in the back I keep track of the combos that I really like and might want to duplicate later and I know I'm not going to remember what pencils I use what color you know what anything so I also have this this helps out a lot so oh I'm shaking you guys I'm sorry okay so we're going to come back in and I'm going to add some more of this um, terracotta and I'm going to come in with um, not quite medium pressure, but a little harder than, you know, light pressure, just a little bit, not like, you know, super, super hard because again, the paper. So, cause I've already heard, you know, people saying they were, they've already ripped you know, holes in their paper and y'all know me, it just breaks my heart. I'm like, oh no, because if I was coloring and I, you know, I wasn't, I couldn't, I wasn't one of those people who can tell that the paper was thinner and I'm thinking, you know, okay, well, it's the same, you know, it's Kirby. Not knowing that the paper is different um, and I ripped a hole in my paper because I'm coloring like I normally do, I would be kind of sad, so. So I'm just kind of using this, this terracotta to kind of blend out that brown so that it's not too dark because I kind of want it to be, you know, a little bright, just a little bit. Um, you guys know I'm not one for really, really bright colors but I did want these trees to kind of pop and stand out because the bird itself is brown, the tree branch is brown, you know, so I kind of wanted something to pop and stand out. So I was like, okay, I know the bird is supposed to be the focal point and it probably still will be once it's done and colored, but um, I didn't want like all these browns to kind of like mix and match together and kind of you couldn't tell what was what because everything was all brown. And granted, you know, it's going to be different browns. I'm going to try to, you know, spread, not spread them out, but use different types of brown. Like, you know, maybe some red browns. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, You know, we're going to do this one step at a time. And probably for each page, we'll do that. We'll just, you know. Take it bit by bit because I don't know. A lot of the times I'm just kind of going along as I go. I have a plan in my head, but it's not fully executed because I'm not sure which colors to pick or anything like that quite yet. So, just add some. So, you guys can see, and it looks a little bit different. But it's, it's much more, it looks like there's a lot of brown still for some reason on through the camera. But it's actually, it's not that much brown. And if you feel like you added too much brown, you can actually come in with maybe like, um, if you're using Prismacolor, you can come in with something like a yellow orange. Or if you're using um, Polychromos, 
and you feel like it's too much brown, you can come in with cadmium orange. And I can actually show you guys on one of these trees what that would look like really quick. Um, I don't know if I'm going to add uh, this to all of the trees, but we're gonna we're gonna try one of these. We're gonna try this tree right here, and we're gonna see what it looks like when I add this orange. Actually, it looks pretty cool. So I might I might add just a little bit in certain places, not everywhere because. You know, we don't want it, like I said, well, I don't want mine too bright. But if you feel like it's too much brown and you need some more, you know, pop of color, you can add a little bit of orange, you know, just kind of blend it in with everything else. Just different little spots. And this is kind of how I just, people always ask, oh, what colors you use? I just try different things. And if it works, I take note of it. Um, for future reference, like, oh, I know these colors work well together. So let me go to my notebook and see, you know, what else works well. What else can I use? You know, things like that, because that's the only way you're going to know is if you try things and learn from other people. Like, I don't mind if people, you know use the same colors as me or if they you know want to know hey I want to do it like yours what colors did you use I don't mind okay yeah I use this color for this this color for that but a lot of the times I really don't know I just pick them up and scribble them down and, and I'm like okay this works but I don't like I just started taking note of my color combinations because people always ask and I'm and I know they're tired of me saying I don't know or I don't remember. So I'm trying, you know, not to say I don't know so much. I want to try to have some kind of answer for you guys. So we're almost done here. I'm going to come back in with my lightest color, which is the Naples yellow again. And I'm going to go over everything. And that'll help blend in the browns and the oranges. And it'll also help bring out that pop of color I was speaking of. So if you can see there, you can see how it's all nice and blended. And then these are just kind of like not there yet. So I'm just going to go over it. Um, if you're fine with the way your browns and oranges look, you can go in with medium pressure. Uh, I wouldn't use heavy pressure at all in this book. Um, I, I wouldn't do anything more than like medium. Because, you know, I won't explain again. You guys get, get the point here. So I would just come in with like a medium pressure. And I'm not really heavy handed anyway. So for me, it takes a lot of medium pressures to get something to look, you know, as though it's really heavy pressure like it takes a lot so um let me know what pages you guys are working on and after the eagle page because this page shouldn't take that long uh, i'm gonna try to do a vi one video a week so or if i have time i can do more uh but this like i said is this one shouldn't take that long but we'll be on it for a little bit. It just, or if you guys want, we can work on more than one page. If that's something that you guys would like to see, just let me know. Or if you guys prefer, because I know some people also prefer to like, um, they don't like it when you talk and color at the same time. Some people prefer like the time lapse version. And so I can try to figure out how to do a time lapse version if you guys prefer that or I can try to do both like I have a a kind of a color and chat version and then you know the other version is just like a time lapse with some music or something playing uh let me know what you guys you know 
because I don't really know what you guys like, what your preferences are. And if you guys are going to be the ones watching, then, you know, I just, I know when I'm watching and I'm, you know, watching people do these things, I don't really like the ones with the music. I just, I don't know what it is. I just prefer when they're, they're talking and, you know, kind of not even necessarily like you don't even have to tell me the colors or how you did it. You can just be having a good old conversation with me. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm cool with those, but you know, a lot of people don't, don't like that. So I think I'm going to come back in before we wrap this out and I'm just going to bring in, and this is another reason why I say use medium pressure because sometimes you, you sit back and you look at it and you go, wait a minute, I think I want to add some more of this color or this area is not dark enough or, you know, right. So, and I think if I'm not mistaken with the um, picture I was looking at, these were like white. So I'm not sure if I want to leave them white. Um, maybe I'll, I'll use like a warm gray or I'll come in with like a, maybe a fine liner but I haven't tried fine liners in here yet. So I might need to just sharpen my pencil up really well and come in with a, a really sharp warm gray. But aside from that, um, you guys, the pictures are, I mean the pictures, the trees are pretty much done, you know, and you can, um, you know, you can add some, if you want, you can even add like a little red in here, like a reddish color. But let's see what we can add. If if I wanted to throw in some red, let's see here. I would probably use like a, let me see, maybe, because I don't want to take away from the orange. But if I was to add, let me zoom you out. If I was to add just a little bit of red, I'm thinking maybe like this light cadmium, just a little bit. So we're we're gonna see what that looks like in little other places. Just um, let's see. Where's my light cadmium? Right at the middle. Uh oh, here we are. Okay. So like you can add in just like just little spaces, just maybe like the spaces that's like you know has the little darker browns and you want to just like throw in some red so it's not too too brown you can add some red on top you see how that kind of oh i'm sorry i don't have you guys zoomed in so you can add just a little bit and you want to like kind of blend it out you can even use the terracotta to blend it out. And that kind of adds, you know, just a little bit of autumn to it. Because, you know, there's reds and oranges and browns. In some instances, there's even like, you know, those dark purples. Um, so, you know, you can just add just a hint here and there. And then also, what I also found cool when I was working um, on the turtle page on the front, that little Prismacolor blending pencil works really good too. So I'm going to come in and make sure that I've got all my spaces covered with the yellow and I got everything where I want it to be. And you can, you just, you know, you just keep working it. And that's why I said use light colors because you don't know where you want to stop. And you want to be able to be able to just, oh, I want to, I need to add some color here. And then if you come in with a heavy hand, you can't because you put down too much. And 
you know, you're going to start ripping the paper and, you know, and you might not rip the paper, but you might not be able to layer either. So you might be, you know, you might be coloring on top, but then you might be like, okay, well, where's the color? The color is not, it's not going down. It's not as bright as it should be. What's going on? Well, you came in with that heavy hand and it's now just a tad bit harder. It's more than a tad bit. It's, it's harder because you pretty much used up. I, I like to think of it as using up all your continues in a video game. And you're like, well, I don't have any continues left. I'm about to die and I'm almost finished. And you're like, well, you know. So, I guess that wasn't a good reference. So, the, the orange <laughs> helps. So, what I think I'll do um, for the tree stumps, I think I'm going to come in with this... Uh, this is warm gray too. And for Prisma color, I think Prisma color's got some warm grays. Let's see. Well, actually, for Prisma color, it's actually closer to the French gray, the 20%. And so I'm just gonna. And I'm gonna go lightly because, like I said in, in the reference photo, the 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 trees were white but I'm just gonna add just a little bit of you know just some warm gray so it can kind of they weren't like you know super white so the the warm gray will tone down the bright white of the page and you just need a little bit So that's what I'm going to add in here. Okay. So it seems like um, Sundays are really good days for me to record videos. So you might see videos up, you know, every Sunday you know until things change and if I have time you'll see videos before that as well so that'll be it for this video though so we, we've got let me zoom out we've already got the top part done so the next video we can work on the tree branch we can work on his feet his face let me know what you guys want us to work on next because, like I said, I'm going to break this up into parts. And, um, you know, if you want the next picture, because this, this whole picture is going to be broken up into parts. Let me know if you want the next one broke up into parts because this one's already about 45 minutes long. So let me know how you guys want these videos. And, um... If you guys like the video, I'm going to ask you to please hit the like button. Um, it helps a lot. It helps my channel kind of get out there because I have a very small channel right now. So it helps, you know, other people see my channel, other colorists. So hit the like button, um, comment. That helps as well if you don't mind. And I will see you guys next Sunday for the next video. And I want to thank you all for watching. I'll see you soon.